All right, let's go to the next part here, UFOs. I've been dying to get into this one ever since the story came out yesterday. I want to really spend some time and go through this thing to help people understand. So, uh, guys, let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. Um, I'm going to break down, I think, the most relevant and the most important parts. The headline here is the intelligence officials say that the U.S. has retrieved craft of non-human origin. Now, first of all, that is a massive headline. But I also want to draw everyone's attention to the byline here, Leslie Keen and Ralph Blumenthal. Now, for those who are not as uh, initiated as I am, one of the reasons why these two journalists are absolutely unimpeachable on this topic is that they were the ones who brought the world the 2017 New York Times article that actually revealed the existence of the UFO program inside of the Pentagon, and of course gave us those videos, which are now, you know, so many Americans have seen the go fast video, the Tic Tac video and others. And they really opened up the space for respectability and acknowledgement by P Pentagon officials and others that this is a real phenomenon. And really they ignited the congressional interest enough to try and get some information about the program. Okay. So that's kind of the starting point, the headline and also who these reporters are. And let's get into the content. So here is what they are saying is that a former U.S. intelligence official who is now turned whistleblower under the official whistleblower co uh, process is giving Congress and the intelligence community, Inspector General, extensive classified information about deeply covert programs that he says possesses retrieved intact and partially intact craft of non-human origin. This information, he says, has been illegally withheld from Congress, and he has now filed a complaint through the program alleging that he suffered illegal retaliation for the confidential disclosures reported here in the debrief. This whistleblower, David Grush, 36 years old, a decorated former combat officer in Afghanistan. He's a veteran of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, the National Reconnaissance Office. He apparently was one of the people who would help compile the presidential daily brief. As I understand, he was given over seven hours of interviews um, to Newsmax, which are airing recently about the documentary um, that has been uh, working with some great UFO researchers who have been long in this topic. And I was want it Newsmax people... or News Nation? Isn't Sorry, News, News Nation? Nation. I apologize. News Nation. No There's too many startup uh, cable uh, things out there. <laughs> Here is what is very important. David Grush says that the recoveries of partial fragments of craft through and up to fully intact vehicles have been made for decades through the present day by the government, its allies, and defense contractors. Furthermore, he has told Congress in sworn testimony of the existence of decades-long, quote, publicly unknown Cold War for recovered and exploited physical material, competition with near-peer adversary over years to identify UFO crashes and landings and retrieve the material for exploitation and reverse engineering to garner asymmetric national defense advantages. Here's the other thing I think everyone needs to understand. David Grush, not only is a patriot, not only is somebody who was tasked actually with assignment to the UFO program to go and to discover all of these secret programs, which he then says were illegally withheld from Congress, which is why he's coming out. That's how he got his hands really on some of these files and became known to the existence of these secret compartmentalized black off, uh, black, highly secret black programs as they are known. But Crystal, he is testifying to all of this under oath. He has signed under penalty of perjury that he is telling the truth, not only to Congress, but to all of us through this official whistleblower process. And he has felt so strongly about bringing this information to light that he has actually left the government says simply so he can bring the all of the US public this information. Not wow. only that, not only that, but what I think people really need to understand is that not only is this being done through the official whistleblower process, but that the actual inspector general, the intelligence inspector general to whom he submitted his complaint in July of 2022, found his complaint, quote, credible and urgent in an official US government document. So this is not a crank. This is somebody who was attached to the program, had knowledge of the program. He was actually tasked with going and discovering all of these secret compartmentalized ones, delivering the reports to his uh, authorities who would then go and give them to Congress. He's coming forward because he says 
that they have been illegally withheld, the existence of these programs, actually from Congress. He submitted these documents through the internal process. The inspector general of the U.S. intelligence community itself finds David Grush both credible and urgent. And, I mean, the allegation here is the most stunning allegation of all. The existence of Kraft in the possession of the United States government, of other foreign governments, of Kraft of, and parts of Kraft of non-human origin. Um, I listened to um, a breakdown of seven hours of the interviews that he gave. Apparently, he's also referred to, quote, in the plurality, non-human intelligences, non-human intelligences, in terms of the types of craft that are uh, are within the possession of the government. And finally, you know, the last thing I'll say before I shut up and get your reaction is, this implicates massive crimes a- across the U.S. government. First and foremost, the current head of the UFO task force just told Congress there is no existence of craft or program that we know of. This says that he's a liar. He actually perjured himself before Congress. Second, and then uh, the second, which is so important also to understand is, Grush is saying that there has been a decades long crime and also even collusion between the US government and aerospace defense companies outside of normal processes to cover this up from the US public, from presidents, from Congress, and now basically you know, for years and years. And from what I understand, he's alleging crimes of such tremendous like weight that many of the people, if they're even still alive, or you know, if if this ever does fully come to light, they would go to jail uh, if if the actual accountability happens in this process. So, I mean, look, in in some ways, it's the most important story in the world. Like this guy is one of the most credible people, probably in the UFO world, to come forward since David Fravor in the 2017 article, and is literally saying that the, the government has the possession of alien or you know non-human spacecraft it's incredible it's absolutely <laughs> stunning and just to underscore what you're saying yeah. keep in mind this man is risking his freedom and potentially his life in order to come forward and make these claims through official whistleblower processes um so it is a stunning revelation let me play the skeptic here for a moment Sagar. sure um so what he's alleging is that there was not only a you know whole of government within the United States cover up, but there was a global cover up that there were multiple countries that were competing to obtain these craft because of obviously like the scientific discoveries and military defense advances that you can make from reverse en- engineering this type of alien technology. Is it far fetched to believe that everybody over all of these many decades? kept their mouth shut and that this information never became public Mm -hmm. previously. Listen, I mean, that's what everybody always says. And I think it's a fair point. But then JFK clearly was killed by somebody. We still don't know who it was, Um, or at least officially. It's been decades, right? You would think it's one of the biggest stories in the world. And yet the official narrative is not out there, only questions. Um, Or let's think about some other big ones. I mean, the JFK assassination that we had even with the UFOs, I mean, Roswell, the government has already admitted that they lied on Roswell, and that was, you know, 1947. And yet we still don't know the truth about what happened there. So I think what is, oh, Charlie, Charlie Manson is another one that we can think of. The Manson murders, if you read the book Chaos by Tom O'Neill, it is very obvious that this is a CIA, U.S. government operation gone terribly wrong, in which they effectively created Manson, may have even been connected to Jack Ruby. Well, you know, Tom O'Neill, decades after the crime, is still unable to get these guys to talk. And he comes as close as he possibly can to proving that the official story was complete BS. So on the one hand, you know, common sense would say, yeah, you're probably right. But we have enough proven examples to show that if you keep the circle small enough, and if you really work the system, that you can keep enough questions out of the public consciousness to make the propaganda flourish. And here's another, such an important part of this story, Crystal. They brought, Leslie Keen and Ralph Blumenthal brought brought this story to the New York Times, to Politico, to The Hill, to The Washington Post. Every single one of them passed on it. And look, read the story. It's rock solid. As a story, as it's, it is unimpeachable. The only reason that the mainstream media and others wouldn't do this is because somebody in the Pentagon threatened to retaliate is they threatened to say 
we're going to go either. Like you, if you run this, we're going to, you're going to burn some of your sources. I mean, they are trying to relegate this to the fringes of the internet, to, you know, f- you know, crackpots like me and others, um, to the ones who are talking about it because they don't want it to enter the public consciousness. There is no question that this is a credible allegation. And yet I have not seen a single, single mainstream journalist take this up. And by the way, I've talked here previously. I was a former Pentagon correspondent. I've sent this to multiple former Pentagon course or for current Pentagon Pentagon correspondents. I said, please, please ask them about this. I'm already looking into ways like maybe I can, you know, try and uh, you know try and get some answers as well. I'm trying my best, you know, but I'm not within the system as much as I was at some point. Until people start pushing not only the representatives but also uh, the press for answers, they're going to try and squash this as much as they can. Because on on its face, we have a credible allegation here that the current head of the UFO program lied to Congress. No ifs, ands, or buts. And then not only that, but the sworn testimony and all of the documenting evidence about how credible this man is, about you have former UFO Army colonels and others from the intel community coming out, openly saying up that he is unimpeachable, that you can absolutely take into bank, you know, everything he's been saying he's been vetted for over 15 months by these journalists and others who were involved um, with this. So just wow. I mean, wow. It, yeah. it really, like I said, if it's, if it's true, it's the biggest story in the world. I mean, it just, it seems so wild that it's hard to wrap your head around. I mean, just to be candid, yep. what do you think happens next, Sagar? Like, what's the next part in the process? And did he decide to come forward now because it seemed like he may have some actual allies in Congress? It, I, it's certainly possible. Uh, that's something, actually, we can speak with our next guest, Ryan Graves, about one of the pilots who actually has come forward about these, uh, these not only this specific allegation, but just about his own encounters um, up in the air for years while he was in the United States Navy. I believe he is coming forward because of people like Kristen Gillibrand, of Marco Rubio, of Tim Burt, you know, several other members of Congress who are, they've had enough. They've had enough of the lies from the intelligence community and uh, they want to hear the truth. And, you know, this this could give them the ability to get to it. Now, personally, I do not underestimate the CIA, the US government or these black programs. They didn't keep stuff secret for 75 years by no accident. And so, we're still, this is only the beginning. I think it could be a tipping point. It really could um, into disclosures and exposure of the future. But I, I don't think that uh, I don't think that things are going to necessarily change overnight. There's still a lot of work yeah. that has to be done. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us, and if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.